Hey everybody, it's Kate. And Devin. Welcome to Med Crimes. Here we are again. Again. guys hey dudes happy We're back. every other tuesday we love every other tuesday with you guys it's just kind of the best we do we, we do. do here mm-hmm. we are thank you for everybody who's given us such excellent response to our last episode oh my god kate we and i love kate you. and i were just talking we've gotten a lot of really good excellent feedback so it's really appreciated yes and we just like love that everyone is still just like reaching out on social media. We get messages every single day, and just oh, like and my so favorite much that Kate and I, Kate and I, you and you and I have said this. Mm-hmm. I think it's the most. I don't know if adorable is the right word because it's not like childish or anything, but like I just love it, and I think it's the cutest thing when someone's like. I can't believe you responded. I, know, I, have, I love that. I didn't expect this. And oh my God. And I'm like thinking, I am no one. I know. I don't. We're literally <laughs> no one, you guys. And and every time I, I just think changed that, a poopy like, diaper. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you guys, no, we know you. Like we're friends. Like you we're all we're all buddies here. Like we all just we got this. We all feel like we know you guys because we talk to you like you guys are our buds. So you guys are Absolutely. like part of our fam. We have a listener fam. We have a Patreon fam. We have the best And I think listeners. Kate and I are very proud of our response rate that we oh, will yeah. always say thank you. We mm-hmm. will. I mean, you know, we're always going to try to say thank you and for we your always. suggestions and your feedback yep. mm-hmm. and just for reaching out. I think it's really, really cool. I mean, yeah, we, we do what we can to try to respond to every single thing that we see and we hear. So keep it coming. We love talking to you guys. And, and um, so speaking of everybody reaching out that's Mm. what has apparently i had no idea up until 30 seconds ago what story kate was going to do today and the it freaked me out because the last time that i didn't even have a name of who we were doing it turned out to be carl tanzler and i'm (laughs) still like flabbergasted over that one so you just told me who we're doing and again thank you to everybody who's reached out because it's like what you guys want you get and Mm -hmm. We may not have a whole lot yet, but this is what we're going to talk about. So, um, And I just want to say Halloween is approaching. We love this season. It's like our favorite holiday. After Halloween comes Christmas. And for Christmas, I am going to get Devin a framed giant portrait of Carl Tanzler to hang no. in her living room. Oh, no. <laughs> And it's going to be that just so that people can see it? Like, because Kate and I are remote again, unfortunately. Of course, because my son is just tested positive. And so we're all just, you know, separate. And it sucks balls. Anyway, continue. Third week, third third time in a row. But hey, again, we're thankful for being able to do it. Mm -hmm. But no, we do not need a picture of me in my living room with Carl Tanzer behind me. That is no. (laughs) No. But that's what I want. That to is see. some kind of freaky shit that I'm not into. No, it'd be like a gag gift. I just want to see you open it so that you can just have that beautiful, Freak horrified look out. on your face that we all love so much. <laughs> no, oh, it's a beautiful you. thing. Um, we have so Patreons. do you want to do our? Uh, should should we? Want? Speaking of Patreons, mm-hmm. so announce our Patreons and then we'll do our second announcement. Okay, beautiful. So we have Rebecca B. Oh, wow. hi, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca B. And we also have Bonnie. I think it's P-E-I-N-E. I think it's Pine or Peen. Either way, we love you both. I'm really glad that we're remote and I don't have to say these names. But welcome, Bonnie. Oh, Welcome, Bonnie and Rebecca. That you guys are strong, incredible minotaurs that are just Ooh. like leaping around in the forest and just like causing fucking shenanigans because you're awesome but you two have be- joined our patreon family just in time mm-hmm. and it's still not too late for anybody else you have a couple more days to get on in but we announced in our last episode that to celebrate our one year anniversary which is legit like right now i think it's- we recorded november 1st we did last year because we now. were we were talking about mm-hmm. sneaking our children's halloween candy like a rat 
Yes. <laughs> so in the kitchen like a rat. Yes. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so in celebration of our one year Med Crimes podcast anniversary, we are doing our Patreon party for anyone who's part of our Patreon family. So Kate and I have decided on a date. Drum roll, please. You don't have to wait that long. Ready? I'm Saturday. Drumming. Oh, oh, you are drumming. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Saturday, November 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Woo! Woo! So everybody's going to be getting um, a Zoom invite and notifications on the Patreon site um, Mm -hmm. about it, on how to join. And we're going to all just, like, party for an hour. Talk to everybody. Get to to know you. See some of your faces to the names that we've been seeing and chatting with over the last year. um, And just have a good time. So be amazeballs. Those that are not currently part of the Patreons have four days left to join. Yes. If you decide you want to and are able to, we'd love to chat with ya. Also, so, Kate, Devin. Oh, okay. What? Um, I just wanted to say that I can see your face today. And you're not just like a <laughs> like a um a black shadow of nothingness on your face. Um, it's still pretty dark over here, but I've changed the angle a little bit in the living room. Okay. It is better, but the light ring is coming. The light ring is coming. You ordered a light ring. I love that. I did. I did. And it's coming. Well, it's very comforting to not have to talk to a shadow person this whole time. That sounds creepy. That's how it was last time. You were a shadow person telling us a crazy story. And this time around. Why don't you let people know what crazy story we're doing right now? I suppose I could. Um, So we've gotten a lot of requests and you guys have sent us tons of articles, which were super, super helpful about Lucy Letby and um, just because, you know, it's what people are wondering about and want clarity on. I felt like it was important to, you know, I I wanted to even touch on it during the last episode, like in the beginning and be like, hey, you know, just so you know, we're we're looking into this. But I feel like I, I just have been sucked so deeply into this story and been following it so closely because it's so shocking and so horrible what happened to these babies and these families that I felt like, you know what, we just have to do, you know, a segment at least or like an episode and just, you know, kind of tell you guys the story because I think it's an important one to tell. And Um, again, the story of what we know now. This is what we know now. What we know right now. Probably have a follow-up when the time comes. We will definitely have a follow-up. Unfortunately, I think we're starting to see that we have more and more of these. You know, we just recently did one where we don't have the closing part of it yet. We have Lucy. There's Mm -hmm. another situation of a gentleman in, what is it, North Carolina? Yes. I just Uh, got sent an article on that tonight, too. Yeah, absolutely. It's wild that, you know, there's no shortage of content for us to to cover. That's for sure. And it's... um, We would like to think eventually we would run out because that would be for the good of healthcare. Wouldn't that be nice? But it's like very disconcerting, right? That, That all of this is going down. But... So Lucy Letby, if you are unfamiliar, is the neonatal ICU nurse from the UK who has been accused of killing seven infants and attempting to kill 10 others. And this is, again, alleged because the trial is currently ongoing and it's actually unfolding like currently. And there are daily articles that summarize what went on in the courtroom. And so there's more and more information coming out every day. And so, um, I've so been, maybe we'll have to do a brief part two. Uh, I'm for the next sure one we'll with definitely need closed. a part two. Yeah. We'll definitely need a part two to wrap up um, the the witness statements and to wrap up. I had the verdict. only um, I had only briefly because again, not wanting to spoil things that we talk about in the future. Like I hadn't. I had just read brief snippets of what she had been accused of, but I didn't Mm -hmm. realize that the trial was going on right now. Like I thought like her arrest had just Mm -hmm. happened, you know? So, um, so yeah, the trial is ongoing. So there's more information just like pouring out as we speak. Um, so she has been arrested. She's been charged. And like I said, the trial is ongoing and she's not been convicted of anything. So, Again, everything we're talking about here is alleged only, and we will, of course, continue. I would to imagine the you UK guys. also follows innocent until proven guilty. I mean, I would. Think I would think. So. I, would I would think. I would imagine so. I think that would be you the guys, right thing to do. We have lots of UK listeners. I'm sure they'll be able to message us and clear that up. 
We do. Um, and so for, speaking of, for those that are UK listeners and stuff, when we do this Patreon party, that's why we tried to be very specific on Saturday, November 5th, Eastern Standard Time at 8 o'clock, because yes. I know there'll be a lot of time zone differences. So yes. hopefully that works for everybody. There will be. We've got Some a lot of, of you peeps. might be, get up at 4 a.m. to be with us, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to. If not, you know, we get it because Please. we don't expect you to get up at like 3 or 4 a.m. <laughs> but if you want to, we'd love to have you. We have a lot of people in Australia as well. And they're like literally on the other side of the planet. So they're, <laughs> they're going to be uh, probably it'll be like, have a tough time It'll be like us. Sunday at 8 o'clock at night, right? It will. I yeah, know. pretty. I, I don't really know how time zones work, to be honest. I mean, like, I know how they work, but, like, I don't know what country is at what time, at what time. We, once again, have gotten off the tangent. Let's go back. Listen, I've had some wine, and I like to talk. Good for you! (laughs) I had, like, a really generous glass of rosé before this, so I'm, like, feeling a little chatty. Enjoy. I know. Thank you. Um... I wish it was you and me, like in the basement together drinking wine, but like this is a this is a close second. Okay, so this episode is going to be particularly triggering because it's it it's been heavily in the I'm media. I'm already triggered. I know, me too. And it's been so heavily in the media; it's garnered worldwide attention because of just the shocking nature of these crimes. Um, the first article I read just like made my stomach like jump in my throat with what was happening. It was so shocking. Um, it involves some pretty violent crimes committed against, like, arguably the most vulnerable population in existence, which is premature infants. No, I thought yes. I, w- I was just in my head. I'm like, she's going to say preemies. Yep. No. So seven babies died allegedly at her hand, and she's been connected, again, allegedly, to injuring 10 more. But in reality, if what prosecution is saying is true, she may have harmed or injured many more or even killed more. Um, oh so this is a special kind of evil that we're going to talk about here. Um, and she looks so normal. I mean, there are pictures circulating because she was she was part of like a um, expansion program where they were actually like try like sort of campaigning to open a new pediatric unit within the hospital and she was like the face of that yeah, and so there, she that picture beautiful blonde young oh, woman this picture like, that goes around is like a like a portrait of her like you know like holding a baby or whatever and like she looks ugh. like this angel you know that's you know Wrapped such a in the, as a devil yeah and and it, i mean it's just it goes to show you how you know people can you really never know people and you think that you know the people that you've worked with for years and the people that you know for years, but the fact is you oh God, just don't. don't. Say that. I'm, but it's true because it's and, true. as we'll see, we'll, we're going to see. You know, everybody was shocked to learn what Lucy was accused of. Um, wow. And what's really interesting here is like, you know, beyond just like the shocking disregard for these vulnerable human lives is like the level of cruelty because we're going to get into, you know, the different modalities that she attempted and how she seemed so like to really genuinely like enjoy watching these babies suffer. And it's what she did to these babies. Like, I'm just going to warn you, it's it was not painless. Um, it was, no, these were cruel, painful ways for anybody to die. So with that, if you think this is too triggering, like we get it, move on to the next episode or a previous Can episode I move on? and enjoy. No, you may not. Um, oh. I know this is really hard. So, um, Lucy Letby, um, we know that she's 32 years old. She's from Hereford, England. Um, there's really no info on her early life. We don't know a lot about her. She had no criminal record prior to this. Um, we do know that these are some of like the the test you know the testimonies of people that were close to her growing up and people that knew her you know during and prior her time at this hospital. Um, her family and friends all stated that she always wanted to be a nurse growing up. Um, Jordan Sands, who was a boyfriend of one of Lucy's friends, described Lucy as being nice but a little awkward and. The, the word a little awkward, that was like the worst thing that anybody said about her, really? <laughs> which is like not that bad. Everybody said she was nice. She was courteous. She was sweet. 
she never rose any suspicion prior to these events that was that she was like an actual psychopath and a serial killer um a neighbor she grew up next to stated that she knew her as a child and like watched her grow up and said that she was just like this amazing little girl who was sweet and courteous and well-mannered and again only positive things um so it's it's you know again so what went wrong people you just don't know people right um our timeline begins in July 2015, um, and all of these events that she's been, you know, allegedly linked to occurred between June 2015 and June 2016. So we're talking about the period of about a year. Just one year. Yeah. Yep. But outside of that time frame, there may have been more. We don't know because she did work there for longer than that year period. Um, so Lucy was working at the Countess of Chester Hospital um, in their neonatal unit. And this is, sounds so formal. It does, doesn't it? It's south of mm-hmm. Liverpool, England. Um, and her co-workers all genuinely really liked her. Um, the unit there routinely would deliver and care for infants who were premature. And she worked specifically in the neonatal unit. So um, in July 2016... The unit put a stop to caring for or delivering babies prior to 32 weeks gestation. And they did this because oh. they had noticed a rash of decompensations and an unexpectedly high mortality rate. All of a sudden, their mortality rate jumped to over 10% higher than the average in the, uh, for, for an average neonatal unit in the UK at the time. Wow. So and this was specifically sudden, for children born earlier than 32 weeks? Um, or so, just that's where they felt comfortable that they could handle was 32 weeks and older. So they said where where anybody anybody less than 32 weeks gestation has to go elsewhere until we figure out wow. what's going on. So wow. what that's doing is it you know that's taking the mm-hmm. incredibly tenuous and frail babies out yes, of the of picture course. because yes. the earlier gestation when you deliver pre, the more premature a baby is of course you know the more specialized care they're going to need. Of course. So, and this um, was all pending an internal investigation. So these moms and infants were diverted to neighboring, like tertiary care facilities for care. Um, wow. How frightening for the moms too. Oh yeah! Can you imagine? Um, so now, just to put it in like perspective on their numbers, there. So in the year two thousand thirteen, if we go back, Countess of Chester Hospital neonatal ward had two infant deaths. In the entire year so okay th- so this was like about average i guess for a neonatal unit that year this was 2013 2014 that's great yeah. that's great considering you're in a neonatal and how fragile those babies are exactly two is wonderful two is good 2014 three babies die again not okay. outside the realm of average no 2015 eight babies die for the year oh. So okay. all of a sudden, we've gone up by well over 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, and by 2016, five babies had died by June. Oh, so no. this is when... So And then June 2016 was when they were like, hold on a second. Like, mm-hmm. it's clear that something is going on. So it's this like is almost when, one a month at that point. Exactly. So this is when they stopped delivering kids less than 32 weeks gestation and stopped taking care of those babies because they had to they had to do an investigation. So, and aside from the deaths, again, these near deaths were happening. So it's not just the deaths. It's like these very unexpected decompensations. Like babies that, I mean, NICUs often care for babies for weeks to months, right? Yeah. And, gosh, yes. Yeah. And... I mean, there were babies that were there for months doing really well and all of a sudden would have a completely unexplained, very bizarre decompensation or event. That's just happening for no reason at all. For no reason at all. So um, they start doing this big investigation, right? So um, the Royal College of Pediatrics, which is like an outside party, like a third party, does this whole independent review of everything there. Um, They did do a whole report of everything from staffing ratios to equipment to everything. They made this report that did find that their staffing levels were like a little bit inadequate at times. I mean, what, you know, nursing unit doesn't have staffing challenges, Mm -hmm. Um, but we're not able to identify like an actual root cause 
which is what they were hoping were f- to find some that, variable. That it wasn't that the root cause was not related to inadequate unsafe staffing. Exactly. Like they could they could immediately rule that out. Right. Exactly. So um, now, however, that year, like other staff members, so like around this time when the investigation is ongoing, staff members are starting to really suspect Lucy as the root cause, and we'll talk about why. The first clue was that Lucy goes on vacation, right? She takes like two to three weeks off to go on vacation with her family. During the time she was gone, no decompensations, no deaths whatsoever. Everyone was just thriving and doing what they needed to be doing. And it was like it was before. So that was the first clue to other staff that like, "Mm, okay, like Lucy's Lucy's the only var- variable that's not in this right now and all of a sudden everybody's doing well. So you don't have a pattern yet. Right now it could be a coincidence. But. Exactly. So now administration couldn't like immediately prove anything. And of course they didn't initially suspect that anything was being done intentionally. You know, their first suspicion was, okay, well maybe she's just you know her pra- there's something with her practice that needs to be corrected you know or whoever okay. this is you know because it's like virtually unimaginable that someone would do this shit on purpose that was not they were not thinking that at this point they're thinking there's a staff I'm so member curious that's- to know what shit it is that you're talking about as far as what she did but i so don't want to know yeah we'll talk you we'll know? get there we'll talk about it i no we won't we yeah do, no. do we yeah. have to yeah we do it's important uh. Devin. we have to tell their story so, you know, what their thought was, okay, like, if something is going on with Lucy and, like, you know, her, it's just, like, her practice, it, you know, there's something with her practice that needs to be, you know, uh, corrected or we need to see what she's doing that might be leading to these de- decompensations. They moved Lucy from l- working exclusively night shift to working exclusively day shift, which they will often okay. do. Um, Mm -hmm. because, you know, during the daytime, there's a lot more resources, there's more support, there's more staff on the floor, you know. And there's more, you know, there's more oversight, but there's more chances for, but, but even more importantly than that too, there's, there's more resources for education Mm -hmm. and assistance, you know, if if they really, if they were really truly wondering if it was poor practice, well, Mm -hmm. During the day shift, we have the people who can be there to help you, to help you grow. You know, on the the night shift, you really need the people who are strong and independent, you know, and who can, and who can multitask and manage all this heavy things when there aren't those resources around. That's exactly the rationale behind why they did that. Now, um, what? staff did notice immediately that once they switched her from night shift to day shift all the babies started dying and decompensating on the day shift and everybody on the night shift did just fine Mm -hmm. so um this was a pretty big red flag to investigators and by this point Mm -hmm. they could they could make lucy sort of the common connection here that that pattern starting that pattern is starting to emerge they're not yet making the connection that she's doing this intentionally because, again, it's unimaginable. Um, I mean, we've I all... I know. I know. So um, around this time, um, there were some text messages, like, sent back and forth. And we'll talk a little bit more about the text messages. But she would text her colleagues. And one of her colleagues had pointed out that she was having terrible luck with her patients as many would, like, start to get sick on her time and, and pass away on her time. And... Her colleagues would, one of her colleagues had texted her, quote, you're not having a great one of it, are you? Like, um, like you're having right. a bad, like a rough time. Right. Like, uh, mean, like agreeing with them that, yeah, yeah you're really having a rough exactly. go of it. Yeah. And if you've worked in health, cl- health care, you know, the term black cloud, like everybody mm-hmm. knows a black cloud or you are a mm-hmm. black cloud. <laughs> like I'm, one of the two. Yes. Yep. Either you've, you've been a black cloud for a period of time or, you know, someone who's just always got that shit happening to them. And everyone just thought she, Lucy is the black cloud. You know, oh, Lucy's here. Mm-hmm. It's a black cloud. It's going to be a bad shift. She's the blackest cloud of the ball. So, um, what a reputation, right? No kidding. (laughs) So at this point, you know, administration had put together this timeline that sort of obviously correlated perfectly with all of Lucy's shifts and they involved authorities and based on this timeline alone and some of the testimony that was coming back from what 
staff members had started to witness and what moms and and parents and consultants had started to witness, they arrested her. And we're going to talk about some of those witness statements shortly. Um, Got it. So they arrested her. They searched her home and they found a note. It was, it's like a post-it note and I'll post a picture of it. Um, and there was a bunch of like tiny little handwriting on it and like some all caps writing on this post-it note. It said, quote, I don't deserve to live. I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough. I'm horrible. I'm an evil person. I am evil. I did this in all caps. Um, it also goes on to say, wow. quote, no one will ever love me. I'll never have my own family, which. So this was a huge piece of evidence and the prosecution has well, used it. It's almost it like a confession of something on a of, piece of paper. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not, she's not confessing she killed those babies, but she's confessing to well, doing something. No, but if, I mean, it, it does, if it is referring to the babies, it mm-hmm. is, you know, speaking to some, some type of intent, you would say, right? Yes. It, yes. And so, um, That last line, too, um, the no one will ever love me, I'll never have my own family. There is a theory floating around. Of course, this is all speculation. Um, But there's this theory floating around that maybe out for a motive, you know, maybe she couldn't get pregnant or she was having fertility issues or she was, you know, upset that she hadn't found that person and, you know, didn't have a family of her own. Yeah, my first my first she was angry at the babies. My first thought went to like miscarriage. You know? Well, yeah, and and it's possible. Yeah. Like I, we don't know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of course, all speculation. That you know, there's of nothing course. that's been confirmed. So, right. um, and so when they were searching her home, given the gravity and like the volume of the crimes, they even dug up her garden because they were wondering what? if she had like infant remains or any evidence <gasps> that was buried in the in oh, the garden. Oh gosh! Yeah. Did they find Wild. anything? No, they found nothing. Okay. Oh. I know. So. It's really interesting, like, with with what she did and how much she did, that there was just never any suspicion around her. Like, before this, this past year, I mean, everyone really genuinely liked this girl. Like, no one had a bad thing to say about her. She was just this, mm-hmm. like, such well-liked person. So, the details of the crimes get, like, pretty disturbing. So, we're, we're going to kind of get into now like some of the witness testimony and um, what the families are saying, what staff members are saying they witnessed and what some consultants are saying and some findings from like postmortem stuff. And so things get a little. So uh, here's your trigger here. warning folks. Yes. So um, I'm getting a lot of this just from articles that are being published essentially daily about witness testimonies that are ongoing and it's st- okay. all still happening. Um, and they are not releasing the names of the infants to, you know, obviously Good. protect their anonymity no. and the family's and their privacy. families, their moms, um, their parents. So they are instead referring to them as babies A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. And it goes all the way to baby M. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <clears throat> oh. So we're going to talk about a few of the cases. Um now, baby A was a twin, as many of the in the NICU are, because many twins are born I, prematurely. Premature. Absolutely. And even, even if they are born at term, they tend to be very small. And if they're mm-hmm. small, they often do need, you know, some pretty specialized care. So this baby died under mysterious circumstances after having a very unexpected decompensation, as many of the other ones did. So during the event, of course, there were, you know, when you're trying to figure out what's going on and you're in a code, there's lots of things happening. They're putting in lines, they're intubating, they're taking x-rays mm-hmm. to try to see, you know, did, is there a pneumo? Did we collapse a lung? Mm-hmm. Is the ventricle looking blown? Like, we don't, we don't know. Um, so they obviously did a whole bunch of testing. Now, after, you know, they tried to resuscitate the baby and unfortunately, baby A did die. Um now, during the investigation later, Dr. Owens, Dr. Owen Arthurs, who is a professor of radiology at London's Great Ormond, I'm sorry, London's Great Ormond Street Hospital, um, was asked to review all of the images to see if there was anything that he could see that was, you know, out of the ordinary. Now, this was he, after the death was, of the baby. This was after the death of the baby, as okay. a as part of the investigation. 
Yeah. Um, so he noticed that on the x-ray, um, there were large amounts of gas present within the bowel, but that's not entirely unusual. Um, as well as, you know, the, the heart and the lungs actually looked normal. Um, seeing gas in the bowel, again, can be normal because babies often swallow air when they're crying or when they're trying to eat. Um, but what w- was unusual, though, was that he could see a line of what looked like gas or air just in front of the spine, like in like in one of the arteries, like just adjacent to the spine. This is unusual because it indicates that there is air or gas present in the bloodstream specifically. So according to Dr. Arthurs, this is consistent with, but not diagnostic of, an air embolus. Like somebody had taken a syringe full of air or air. gas and injected it directly into the bloodstream. Now that can be fatal because it acts like a blood clot. When it's circu- mm-hmm. when air pockets are circulating in our bloodstream, it acts just like a blood clot. It can cause strokes, um, heart attacks. That's why um, it's called an embolus, embolism. which that's with, why with the moving that's exactly clot. exactly what it is. But yep. it's, just, it's just a pocket <clears throat> of air instead of clot of blood. Right, and it sits somewhere, it finds a place to sit, and it just sits just like a blood clot does. So... Um, you know, that's an unusual finding because while it doesn't necessarily... So is he saying to, it looks like one or is one? So what he's saying is it's con- it's consist- it's a consistent finding with an air embolism, but it's not okay. diagnostic of an air embolism, okay. meaning that okay. it looks like this could be an air embolism, but I cannot confirm that that's exactly what happened. Okay. But we've we've essentially confirmed that there's air in the bloodstream and there's no other real great explanation as to how it got there unless uh, either than it was either accidentally or purposefully introduced into the bloodstream now by i somebody can see else. now i can see why you're saying that they wondered if it was just poor practice exactly because we know in some of the things that we do as nurses or in any field in the healthcare that the air bubbles can, can absolutely be problematic 100 percent. and i mean the things that we as nurses do and other health healthcare professionals. I mean, if you don't do them right, you can cause harm and death to people. There's a reason very for easily. why we're educated to do the things that we need to do. It's it can get very very dicey very quickly if you don't do things exactly how you're supposed to do it. Um, now, on another incident, um, a mother of twins testified that she walked in on Lucy attempting to kill one of her twin baby boys. Um, He was five Mm -hmm. days old at the time and weighed only three pounds at birth. So very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, allegedly, Lucy was seen hovering over the infant and he was bleeding from his mouth, allegedly. Um, And Lucy had told the mom at the time, quote, I'm a nurse. Like, trust, I know what I'm doing. I'm a nurse. Um, Shortly after Lucy left his bedside, he rapidly deteriorated. And I'm sorry, but I cannot think of a single reason why the baby would be bleeding from the mouth. The you know, only like, real reason would be if something were very wrong. Like, even if you didn't right, do anything but to that for, baby. Like, well, that's what I'm saying. And then wrong. for her to be like, trust like, me, it's, it's okay, fine. I'm a nurse. It's like, fine. I'm a nurse. That's it. And we're going to get into, we're going to see that more. Just inaction, complete inaction and disregard for when things are obviously very wrong. Um, so less than five hours later, that baby was pronounced dead. Oh, no. Um, so, um, this, this was like literally less than five hours after Lucy had last interacted with him. Now there was how a physician. How awful for that this, mother. How can I, I just, I can't wrap my head around any of this and it's been really, it's been fascinating, but also like, I, I just, I can't really understand how somebody can look at these just incredibly vulnerable you know tiny human lives and you're literally holding these kids lives in your hands with every single thing that you do and they're they're basically the size of your hand they're some literally of them. these tiny little like perfect <sighs> brand new human lives and I, I just how can you how can you how can anybody Thing, and it gets worse. It gets really bad. Oh, cool. and great. We'll talk about it. Um, sure. But it's it's just really incredible. It, it really is. So um, there was a physician who attended to this child while he was deteriorating and tried to help and save him. Um, 
And he stated, quote, I had never seen an infant bleed like this. Certainly oh not God. spontaneously. He lost over a quarter of his blood volume during oh. this episode. Oh, my goodness. Um, and this that baby. so much blood. Yeah. This baby that we're talking about is baby E. And baby E's death was originally attributed to a gastrointestinal bleed that might affect infants, um, premature infants specifically. It's something that can happen. It's rare, but it's a thing did that she, can happen. Did, is she, did she allegedly give this baby a medication? So that much? we we don't know because no postmortem was ever undertaken for baby. Oh, no. um, according to that doctor that participated in the resuscitation of efforts, um, this was a huge mistake. And if it were up to him, he would have requested a postmortem, which is um, obviously an autopsy. Um, experts later determined that they now believe baby E died of air being intentionally injected into his bloodstream and that the bleeding was indicative of trauma, like direct, like blunt force trauma. What? Yeah. Oh, these are three pound infants that can't eat or breathe on their own. I, there are no, there are literally no words. She is the literal worst if she did this. I, I just can't. It's really ridiculous. So, this next part here um, is interesting because this is kind of like a classic, like, murderer behavior thing that she did. So... After baby E passed, she took a very intense and, like, specific interest in baby E's family. And oh. even just, like, two days after baby E's death, she was on social media, like, s searching for members of the family, looking at profiles for every single member of the family. And she, there was a, there was an, an analysis done on her computer, and she did this many times over months she would just like look at their profiles online like look at what they were doing look at their pictures and a trying of her, to like follow up on like the just death like of this baby them. that she's alleged to have killed yes like seeing yes they're grieving their posts about grieving or yes yes and just like trying to kind of like connect with them you know what i mean in some way and even on christmas day she searched for them and looked at their profiles christmas christmas day you're you know you're not you know wow. if that does not spell that there's some kind of like sick you know obsession and obviously toxic unhealthy thing going on here i would i would hope maybe guilt too like out of guilt well, is she checking i i don't think there's to i think don't know she's if there's soul? guilt here or not with with you'll see why i'm like i don't think she's guilty i think she really is a sociopath and a Maybe psychopath. Maybe I just have this who little hope enjoys, that she's got a shred of decency. I think there's some enjoyment here in seeing wow. these kids just suffer till their last breath, which is, I mean, just the worst, the worst, unimaginable thing. Now, that's that's super weird. So, now. The, the mom of baby E obviously raised concerns because she was like, you know, I saw this nurse hovering over my baby's bed and she told me not to worry about the bleeding. You know, he was obviously bleeding and she said, oh, I'm a, I'm a nurse. And then she walks away and goes and does something else. And then like he like gets worse, you know, why and didn't then in she... five hours he's gone. Exactly. Why didn't she at least recognize that something bad was happening? Maybe if we had acted quicker, you know, mm -hmm. something better would have, you know, happened. Um, now, what, during the investigation, they found that allegedly Lucy had actually erased the record of that mom's visit to the baby that afternoon. What? To try and make the record reflect that the mom was not there in the room at all with Lucy. And that Lucy also was claiming that initially that she was in an entirely different room when this baby had started to collapse, which was oh, not gosh. true. So... Now, with the defense is trying to put together this picture of Lucy just sucking at being a nurse, okay? Just, like, as a forewarning. Like, but those specific actions 
of erasing the mom's visit and trying. To, Those she's, are intentional she's things. Covering her tracks, she's trying to yeah. cover her tracks and create an alibi for herself. If you were just a bad nurse, you would be too naive to know. You wouldn't. You wouldn't even bother to do that because it's an honest right. mistake. Why would you do yes, that? Yes, you but, wouldn't know that you were doing anything. Exactly, you wouldn't even have a clue. But it's not an honest mistake. She's obviously trying to cover her tracks. So the day after baby E died, Lucy then turned her interest to baby F, his twin brother, who was still hospitalized in this unit. Um, Jurors were told that it is suspected that Lucy administered either breast milk or formula to baby F that was laced with insulin. Um. Less than 24 hours after the death of his twin brother, he crashed as well. Thankfully, baby F survived, but it was close. Oh, thank God. Yes. Oh, my God. I know. Oh. You okay, Devin? She's having a rough time. She's under a blanket and she's hiding. It's this is this is some of the I I was not joking when I said this was some of the worst shit I had read. I cannot even wrap and my head around this. 24 hours later to move on mm-hmm. to the brother. Oh, uh. She is not sorry. She is not guilty. She does this because she fucking enjoys it. If this, it, Allegedly. Fucking enjoys it. I mean, I'm so floored, like, thinking about this. It's just, it just gets me fired up. So, moving on to the next um, case that we have. So a three-month-old child is staying in the NICU, obviously born very premature and spending an extended period in the NICU, um, was left with lasting ailments when Lucy allegedly tried to kill her by injecting mass quantities of milk and air into her nasogastric tube. Um, <clears throat> from a medical standpoint, um, overfilling an infant's stomach can absolutely cause them to stop breathing, um, mm-hmm. just anatomically. Um, Mm -hmm. she, she did this to this baby three times trying to kill her. She did this three times to her. She decompensated and then got better. She just, what she was strong, resilient kid. She did not die. And Lucy did this to her three times. Oh, according to what the jury heard. Come on. She had to be resuscitated obviously each time and was left with some lasting effects. I'm not sure what they are. Thankfully, she survived. Um, now, prosecution claimed that during a two-week... So, week... she didn't have, like, one certain MO as far as to do this. She no, had multiple different ways. She had multiple, and that's something else that's very interesting here, how she did this any which way she could figure out how to do it. And it wasn't I about see a why certain the defense, way. At, at least with this way, is bringing up the sucky nurse way. She yeah. screws this part up. She screws that part up. She it's screws, not just you know. one thing. It's everything. Like, it, it, and right. but it's she's she's just doing this any which way she has an opportunity to do. Now, prosecution claims that during a two-week period when three infants died and two others decompensated, Lucy was the only common factor and the only mm. common presence there with each and every one. This was this was back in June 2015 when they found this this period. She also allegedly killed two out of three triplet boys <gasps> um, and is also accused of killing another after trying three prior times to do so and finally killed him on the fourth attempt. Oh, my I mean, gosh. She's not Fuck just her. killing these kids. She is torturing these kids. I mean, what she's doing... Over overfilling a stomach until a baby suffocates. Think about how uncomfortable we Can are. Can you imagine? You know, like, when I eat too much at Thanksgiving, I'm like, God, I need a God, this is uncomfortable. Like I need a nap. Can you imagine uh, the pain and suffering? Think about like, think about the newborn babies when they're just when they're when it when it's gas. You yes. know, when they're learning to digest and the gas pains and how fussy that can make them. Oh, my god! So when you're thinking, you know, and that's a lot of what brings on colic and all of mm-hmm. these fussy babies is just the gas. So imagine when their stomachs and intestinal systems are so full because yep. of what she's doing, how miserable those babies are. 
That's what exactly. I'm thinking of right now is a fussy baby from Simply Gas. Exactly. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, she's they she's They must just, have been in terrible terrible agony. I cannot even imagine and when you're just like a Their baby, bodies don't know how to process this yet. No. They have to it's, Their bodies are so freaking fragile it's a miracle that she had to try more than once on some of these kids like these kids were i mean babies are resilient and they are strong and they can they can withstand a surprising amount but i mean with what she did to them it's it's really incredible that any of these kids survived it, it really is it's it's wild um so baby i um, was born premature and very small. I think literally like, um, weighed like 800 grams with like oh tiny, gosh. tiny, tiny. Um, now the baby was actually doing really well. Um, but was in the unit for like several weeks to, I think a, a month or just over a month, something like that. Um, Lucy is suspected of pumping massive amounts of air into her stomach over a period of weeks. And on multiple occasions, she decompensated and required resuscitation. Um, a staff member noticed that one of these times, um, a monitor was like blaring in the baby's room because, you know, either her heart rate or, or mm -hmm. you know, something was deteriorating. Um, and sh so she came around to like, you know, check on what was going on with the baby. And she saw Lucy just standing there, like in the doorway, staring just at watching. this baby, just watching it all unfold and doing absolutely nothing. This baby that was quite obviously in in a medical crisis, mm -hmm. and she was just standing there, staring and watching it happen. Like, no nurse would would ever not mm -hmm. do something ever in that situation. Like, no no one with any sort of conscience could ever just no. sit there and watch that unfold so oh, okay. now when this baby died baby i um she sent a sympathy card to the baby's parents stop it um which was a choice um and when she was questioned on why she did it um she stated that the only time she this was the only time she had ever sent out a sympathy card when a baby had passed but Reported that she had, you know, quote, gotten close to the baby, you know, um, and it kind of seemed like she was trying to, you know, kind of get get in with these families and get closer to these families. Um, but she actually Isn't admitted that like what narcissists do. Exactly right. So I think that's totally a narcissistic behavior. Um, and she also admitted to offers that she, officers that she had taken a picture of the sympathy sympathy card that she sent and s like stored it on her phone, so that she could just what? like look at it whenever she wanted to. That's creep. That's isn't weird. that wild. That's so weird. I actually listened to another podcast covering this. Um, they're they're so funny. They're called Last Podcast on the Left, and it's like this this amazing uh, podcast that I listen to from time to time. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. Um, and they, they actually did, like, sort of a, an episode kind of covering what was going on with this. And um, they researched so well. And they just summarized everything so well. Um, and they pointed out that they, they thought that this was, like, tr a trophy behavior. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of serial right. killers will take a trophy. That's exactly what this was. I completely right. agree. Like, why else would she take a picture if she didn't want to, like, be able to look at it anytime she wanted right. to? You know Remind what I mean? Remind her of it. Exactly. So, um, baby I's mom actually testified that Lucy had offered to assist her in bathing the baby after she had passed, which I think that's normal. I think, you know, they, they always offer to do like a bath and sort of put them in, you know, nice clothes and they give mementos and there's like a little box of like keepsakes that they can keep. And often they'll take like a lock of hair and footprints or handprints of the baby and, Things like that, just so that, you know, the parents have sort of a little keepsake kit that they can mm -hmm. take home. Um, so Baby Eye's mom reported, though, that Lucy kept, like, smiling at her during her bath and saying, going, like, on and on about how she was, like, how, oh, I can't believe I get to be present at your first bath. And she was going on about how much the baby had liked it. Like. What? 
so if this baby were alive, this is like normal banter that you would say. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, she likes it. Look, she, oh my gosh, like this is her first bath. This is so uh-huh. special. But this is a demise. Like this is a this is a not alive baby. Why why are no. you saying this? And so that really struck her. That's, the baby's that's, mom that's like as up. very odd. It's very, is... very odd. It's so messed up and so odd. Um, di- totally did not sit right with the mom. So we'll talk about baby K next. Um, baby K is another victim. This is around April 2016. Um, at this point, you know, th- there was a little bit of suspicion surrounding Lucy and, you know, something was going on with Lucy and why are all her patients deteriorating? Now, Lucy was supposed to only be on the day shift at this time and so that she had more oversight. Um, now, a pediatrician had actually walked in on Lucy trying, allegedly trying to kill baby K. Um, so he noted that the baby who was supposed to be on a ventilator, the circuit, the ventilator circuit, like the air tubes that feed into the ventilator had been intentionally disconnected. And Lucy was in the room. And the thing was alarming, and the baby was suffocating, and she was doing absolutely nothing. Gee, where's that beeping coming yeah. from? I yeah. wonder. Not even, not even addressing eh, it. And no so big the, deal. The consultant like walked in and was like, "Uh, excuse me, there's a baby fucking suffocating over here." There's a ventilator you, not doing its job. What are you doing? Are you furniture? Are you going to fix this? Like, what is going on? This is firing me up. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm like a little fired up about this whole thing. It's the wine. <laughs> no, it's the Lucy. <laughs> it's the Lucy. <laughs> it's the Lucy let be. Hey guys, if you're like us and you're fans of all things strange and scary, then let me tell you about this other podcast I've been listening to. The Conspirators is a bi-weekly podcast all about the darkest and most bizarre moments in our history. In each episode, your host Nate Hale, an entirely fictional identity, takes you on a journey through some of the weirdest events in history. And what's most amazing is that they all really happened. You might hear about the real serial killer that stalked the streets of occupied Paris during World War II, the bizarre story of the Irishman who murdered his wife because he believed she was replaced by fairies, or about what's really going on in the Bermuda Triangle. These are the stories your history teachers never told you. If this all sounds really interesting or something you'd be into, then I encourage you to subscribe to The Conspirators today, wherever you get your podcasts. So um, that was, you know, a really shocking thing for him to kind of walk into. Now, um, Baby M was attacked by Lucy. Um, Mm. Allegedly, this was an infant boy who um, actually suffered from hemophilia, um, which is a hereditary bleeding disorder. It affects our clotting Mm -hmm. factors. And, you know, the normal person would would get a minor cut and be able to clot it and heal it, no problem. But somebody with hemophilia, not so much. They could bleed and bleed and bleed. And, you know, it would take a long time for them to, to form enough clot to stop a bleed on their own. Um, now, baby N was a little boy. Isn't she so smart, folks? Eh, you know, I have my moments, but I'm not, not all that smart. <laughs> um, so he had several episodes of decompensation, which, um, according to experts, reflect that he may have been assaulted, like, numerous times. Um, on one occasion, pediatricians responded to one of his decompensations and found that, okay, I, trigger warning here, this one is kind of rough. Um, so fast forward like the next 30 seconds if you um, don't feel like you're vibing with this. So um, pediatricians responded to this this kid who kept decompensating and um, they found that his neck and throat were so incredibly swollen that he was obviously hypoxic and having difficulty breathing. And so they attempted to pass an endotracheal tube and intubate him. And he was so swollen that they couldn't even get an endotracheal tube in his trachea. Um, So they couldn't intubate him. Um, There was fresh blood in his mouth um, and in his throat. What? Why? Yeah. Um, The pediatrician made a statement in court regarding his findings that day as... um, 
quote, this baby had been screaming and crying for 30 minutes. Premature babies do not scream like that. It is most unusual. I have never observed a premature neonate scream like that. Um, that baby, unfortunately, did pass away. So again, folks, these babies are not just going to sleep. These no, are exceptionally, tortured. exceptionally cruel deaths. This, this is, is torture. torture. Absolutely. 100%. Nobody knows exactly what happened to this baby. But there's some obvious trauma, like physical trauma there. Oh. Um, now, baby C um, passed away shortly after being fed for the first time by Lucy Letby. The baby weighed only a few pounds and was ver a very newly born premature baby. Um, he was in an incubator and was ventilated. Um, the alarm was going off on the ventilator and staff responded to find Lucy standing there staring, doing absolutely nothing. Just again fucking we watching all it all rule unfold number one as a nurse like if don't the, do if nothing there's a machine is beeping there's something Make wrong it and stop. we do something about it yes so this... these things have alarms for a reason mm -hmm. now baby c's mom was there and asked what was going on and lucy had told her that the baby's heart rate and oxygen levels had dropped now staff come in and get her stabilized then, apparently, hours later, the exact same event occurred while under Lucy's care. Um, now, Sophie Ellis is a new grad nurse on the unit who is still fairly green, but had been working alongside Lucy and the other nurses there. She was present during this resuscitation, and she's also testifying in court on things that she saw. Um, she testified that Lucy was at the incubator when they arrived and couldn't remember exactly, and Sophie couldn't remember exactly what Lucy was doing when she arrived there, but that CPR was initiated and staff recalled that the child passed away around 6 a.m. Um, now, after this event, more texts start, are released, you know, after between Lucy and her co-workers. She was quoted in a text to have said, quote, I was struggling to accept what happened to, insert name here, it's, it's baby A she mm -hmm. was referring to, and now baby C has died, and it's all a bit much, end quote. Lucy had also messaged her mom stating, quote, we lost another little one overnight, very unexpected and sad, end quote. Apparently she had also texted others that the baby was, quote, being looked after by the new girl. Referring to oh, Sophie Ellis, on. the new nurse. Um, so this was obviously an apparent effort to blame Sophie for the death because mm -hmm. she was a new grad. Um, but then, like, in the next breath, she texted Sophie that, quote, I, that resuscitation, like, you did so well. And was, like, you know, giving her compliments. So, like, she's she's just, like, this psycho who's she's just playing it, playing things and trying to mm -hmm. trying to, you know, control that narrative. Now, again, the defense is trying to build this case of Lucy just really sucking at being a nurse and creating doubt that she was actually responsible. Which, I mean, they're not wrong. If she's, if no. she's, I mean, she's a terrible nurse for doing these things I allegedly. Mean, yes, of course. And for not dealing. So, I mean, they're not wrong. They're literally not wrong. That's not the reason. Either way, they're right. She is a terrible nurse. Um, now, they are pointing out that in a lot of these cases, there is no direct physical evidence connecting Lucy to each one of these events. That's true. You know, that there's um, a lot of timeline and eyewitness mm -hmm. events that are very difficult to ignore. But right. as terms of physical evidence, there's not a whole lot. Um, they state a lot of this could be just a massive coincidence and that, she, you know, she works a lot of hours. She's just there all the time. Um and he too stated many coincidences. That, yeah, well, I think way too many. Um, he stated that the prosecution is also not highlighting that each child, you know, had their own particular medical issues and how they could have, you know, decompensated on their own. I mean, these babies were in the NICU for a reason, you know, yeah, because they were premature. Again, aren't, these aren't any issues for premature babies that are out of the norm than what they used to have when they exactly. didn't have, when they only had two deaths that year. Exactly. All those babies are still dealing with the same things that the, you know. Exactly. 
the difference the, is Lucy. exactly right yeah and the defense is also talking about things like you know the busyness of their unit and their staffing ratios not being great and things like that so i agree that there are a lot of factors here and that's probably why you know she was unfortunately able to do this to a, a lot of kids and families before she, it was finally realized that it was her allegedly allegedly um now they the um the the sorry i can't talk um the defense is also pointing out too that the note that post-it note that they found could be they're trying to spin it as like a wow i suck type of situation and not necessarily an i did this because i'm a murderer and i did this because i'm terrible and i did yeah, this but, i know yeah, but that doesn't yeah like then the whole thing of like i, I know don't, won't have a family of my own like what it i know that doesn't it that doesn't, doesn't add up i know but that because she doesn't explicitly say in the note i am murdering babies for fun they're trying yeah, to spin I it know. literally any other way so That's um your job they were quoted to state, um, quote, this is more indicative of the anguished outpouring of a woman whom is realizing the calamity of what is being said about her, um, end quote. And they, the defense is also saying that she maybe just wrote these things about being a monster, etc., because that's what the media is saying about her. And she, as in, like, I'm not good at my job. Like, I, I, I mean, you could spin it that way, I guess, but it is definitely a stretch. If you read the note, like, it's, it's stretch. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, the note, and again, I'm going to post it. Um, she has some obvious, very serious mental health issues to write the things that she wrote on that post-it note. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's essentially where we're at in this trial. We're kind of in the thick of it. And as a reminder, this is all speculation. This is what has been acute, what is being, you know, she, what she was accused of and more to come. The trial continues. We will, of course, issue an update how, as things come out. Do we know how, how long is the trial been going on? Do you know? I, I don't actually know. A couple know. weeks? Something like that. So this was quite a story. I'm we'll sorry see. to bombard you with that, Devin, but Ugh. it's an important story to tell. I want to go upstairs and hug my babies. I know. I know. Me too. Oh. You know, everybody my... go home and hug your babies if you have them or your aunt or your nieces and nephews or your fur babies. Or if you don't have babies, that's also fine. Hug your partner. I've spoken. Or yourself. I, you know, I've mentioned this about it before. I mean, my my son was a preemie and he was on the verge of he was only born one day later than what the hospital that I gave birth at said that we would have been transferred to one of those other more specialty hospitals had he been born a day prior That's because of that cutoff right. and mm -hmm. to know that he could have been in a NICU which we mm -hmm. were fortunate enough to avoid unlike other families who aren't that lucky mm -hmm. I can't how vulnerable the, the families are along with the babies oh my gosh I can't imagine and, being in that position you know you're putting your entire family and your entire life in the hands of the people that are caring for them mm-hmm it's unimaginable what they have what they have gone through and it's just wild we were talking about you know in the beginning of all this how we're hearing these things more often and it's like you know just to reiterate that like we love healthcare workers because 99.999999 percent of them are there for the right reasons and want to help people mm -hmm. and genuinely mm -hmm. enjoy their jobs like me and you absolutely and you know these these people that you know we've do gotten this. a few messages from folks that are just like now i'm afraid you know i'm afraid I know. for this procedure i have coming up and that's I'm not like, our girl, intention you don't have to that's be afraid that's not our intention there yes, are so many know. of us out there that are good at what we do yes um, if anything i think it might just be it might just be like we're helping you just be more aware exactly that if something makes you uncomfortable say something you don't have to you exactly know. if your gut tells you something is wrong something is probably wrong and advocate yeah. for yourself advocate for your children advocate for your partner advocate for your mom or dad you know at you know just if something just doesn't feel right it might not be right thank you for sharing what we know now kate yes you're welcome i just wish i didn't 
have to like try to go to sleep now before I, I know with all this in my head. I know I've been thinking about this a lot <laughs> and it's been just like weighing heavily on my mind and of course on a lot of your minds because a lot we're of your getting minds so many because we did we're we getting did a lot get of requests so many yeah, yeah we did we got so many people that were sharing mm-hmm. the headlines with us so yep well, All thank right. you for listening, everybody. Yes, um, always a pleasure. We uh, Yes, we look forward to it. Don't forget to like us, review us, rate us. All of that helps to get us out, um, out in the world to, for people yes. to listen. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to keep uh, following us, you can look for us on Facebook by searching Med Crimes Podcast. Um, you can tweet at us at Med Crimes PC. Follow us on Instagram at Med Crimes Podcast. If you wish to become a Patreon, you can visit www.patreon.com slash medcrimespodcast and join us for our sweet uh, Patreon pate that is happening On next weekend. November 5th, 8 going p.m. To be, again, it's going to be balls. We hope to see you there. And you can also email us your crazy ass stories, questions, comments, feedback, anything you want to chat about at medcrimes at gmail.com. Boom. <laughs> and that's it we need to just stop this train Boom. this crazy train well that was loud <laughs> thanks for listening right, everyone have a good one stay safe out there <laughs> <laughs>